During his State of the Union address Thursday night, President Joe Biden spent some time tackling the issue of abortion and IVF and promised to restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. Those bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade have no clue about the power of women. But they found out when reproductive freedom was on the ballot, we won in 2022 and 2020, and we'll win again in 2024. <laughs> if you, if you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. Biden also put the blame on President Trump for the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe. He pointed to his guest of honor, Katie Cox, saying her story is an example of how reproductive freedoms are being taken away. My predecessor came to office determined to see Roe v. Wade overturned. He's the reason it was overturned, and he brags about it. Look at the chaos that has resulted. Join us tonight is Kate Cox, the wife and mother from Dallas. She's become pregnant again and had a fetus of a fatal condition. Her doctor told Kate that her own life and her ability to have children in the future were at risk if she didn't act. Because Texas law banned her ability to act, Kate and her husband had to leave the state to get what she needed. What her family got through should have never happened as well, but it's happening in too many others. There are state laws banning the freedom to choose, criminalizing doctors, forcing survivors of rape and incest to leave their states to get the treatment they need. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. My God, what freedom else would you take away? Now, Biden there, it sounded like he said, uh, you know, Kate Cox is prevented from having children of the future. There were so many points where Biden slurred his words and accidentally said something funny and took away from the political power of what he was saying. This is also someone who grew up Catholic and grew up in a, a very pro-life family who has made all kinds of statements that can be interpreted as being, you know, anti-abortion statements. He was on the campaign trail and in June of 2019, not that far away from the election, two weeks before he spoke at a Planned Parenthood later in that month, he reversed his decision about federal funding for abortions. It's pretty late in the game right before getting elected. And uh, in that speech, he said that he would ensure that Roe v. Wade was codified in federal law. He made a lot of campaign promises around doing that, which is a difficult promise to make if you're not guaranteed the House and the Senate, which would be necessary to do that. But I don't think he can really take credit in ever codifying the right to abortion into law because it would require, as he said, many people voting in, members of the House and, and Senate who are willing to do that. So it wouldn't be a, a policy or a law change, rather, that we could ever credit Biden for. And of course, Donald Trump is, is the person responsible for the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the Dobbs decision. He promised he would appoint justices to the court that would do so. And then they said they would uphold precedent time and time again when they were being you know, confirmed. But ultimately, they didn't do that. But it's what Donald Trump promised. But because it happened under Biden, there's a really interesting political thing around abortion right now. I was doing field work in Kentucky, and I spoke to people. This was right after the Dobbs decision, who said they found Biden responsible for this. They thought that he was the one that, that did this. And they were Trump supporters. And they were like, well, this happened under Biden, so he is responsible for it. So it's really interesting to see what the sentiment is across the country on abortion on especially considering the timing of the the Dobbs decision yeah I think Biden had also said pretty recently that he doesn't really agree with the idea of your body your choice while going on to say right. that he still supports um, abortion rights so I he's been pretty uh, sketchy on this issue he's been sort of waffling back and forth throughout his career um, trying to sort of marry the official position of the Catholic Church with his public support for abortion, which, in my opinion, are fundamentally inconsistent. Um, but on the, uh, the issue of Dobbs and Roe v. Wade, that was obviously a very galvanizing issue for Democrats heading into the 2022 midterms. I think his promises to codify Roe v. Wade also fall flat because Democrats had control of the House and Senate 
um, in 2021, I believe, when Biden first got into office. So they could have done it when they knew that this decision was on the Supreme Court's docket and that they were likely to rule to overturn Roe v. Wade with the conservative majority. And they didn't do it. They had, I think, six months uh, after Biden took office to be able to actually pass a bill that would make Roe v. Wade the law of the land, and they decided not to. And so it seemed like they were waiting for the Supreme Court to actually overturn it so that they could continue to use it as this political wedge issue. Now the problem for Biden is you're basically two years out or excuse me, three years out from that decision now. I believe it was in the summer of 2021. You're now three years out from that decision, and people have already voted on it in the 2022 midterms. It's not really top of mind for voters anymore. It might maybe uh, be a passionate issue for some female Democrats, maybe some younger voters, but it's not the, uh, it doesn't have the same immediacy that it did in the immediate uh, Dobbs aftermath of the Dobbs decision. And meanwhile, it's also difficult for Joe Biden now to run with abortion as one of his top issues because he's, of course, going against the former president, Donald Trump, who's one of the more moderate Republicans on this. He has said that he opposes a federal ban on abortion. He wants the states to decide. He thinks that Republicans in individual states should be on board with a 16-week ban, which is supported by the majority of Americans. Um, I know that there's some idea on the left that this could be sort of a ratchet effect, that he's just saying that now, and eventually if they pass a 15-week ban, it could get closer and closer to a ban on all abortion. Um, but Trump has been fairly consistent on that, I think. And so I don't think that this is quite the, um, the issue that should be Biden's top issue heading into 2024, um, because it's not one that number one is top of mind for voters, and two, voters um, don't have that perfect foil um, with a very pro-life evangelical Republican on the other side. Right, yeah, I think you know people are afraid that maybe if they elect a lot of folks to the House and Senate, and honestly, uh, at the state level, to the state legislators, if they elect people that are, are willing to make sure that there isn't a full ban, only one in 10 Americans support a full ban on abortion. About two thirds of Americans believe that it, it should be legal up to a certain point. So this is a, a policy that's very popular. It's unpopular to ban abortion in the United States. I think this is, is is going to affect local elections. I think we are going to see people turning out as single issue voters to ensure that that even if Donald Trump is the president, that there wouldn't be, you know, a full ban on abortion if that was something he wanted to do. And similarly, I think there are, are, are people who are, you know, hopeful that Biden would sign that into law if they do get a majority of people into the House, into the Senate, willing to vote for this at the federal level. I, I think it will have an impact, but I don't think it's going to be the determining factor of who becomes president in 2024. I think the economy is on the front of people's minds. And Biden did talk about the, the cost of housing. He talked about shrinkflation. But I think unless you're talking very concretely about how workers are being squeezed on the front of wages as well. I mean, he shouted out Sean Fain. It was great that you had a president of a major union that had a major win who's willing to call out the problems with corporate power there, giving, you know, the fifth up to Biden, but we've really got to see that backed with some more policy promises around concrete policy solutions to high housing costs and to low wages. All right, we'll be back with more Rising right after this.